Have you been thinking of trying Ayurvedic ingredients, but you're too scared? Well, don't be. It's not a big deal. An important part of a healthy hair journey is to experiment and try new things. The more organic the product is, the safer to try. The more synthetic the product is, the riskier. Ayurvedic ingredients are organic, so you're good. Feel free to explore and experiment to see how they work on your hair. The worst that can happen is that you don't like the results. The best that can happen is that you find a new staple. This applies to all organic ingredients like rice water, onion juice, tea rinse, and oils. Originally, I wanted to cover Amla, Shakaika, and Brahmi in one video, but I changed my mind. I think it'll be more beneficial to break them up into their own videos so I can cover more information. So in this video, I'm going to take a closer look at Amla. Amla, also known as Amalaki, Umbilica officinatus, Neely, Philanthus umbilica, or Indian gooseberry, just to name a few, is a fruit from a fern-like, bushy, sometimes not so bushy tree. It grows naturally in both the tropical and subtropical portions of India and southern Asian countries and parts of Africa as well. Each tree can produce about 300 pounds of fruit, which translates to about 30 pounds when it's converted into powder. All organic ingredients from the earth offer more benefits than science can fully comprehend, for now. For instance, amla is composed of thousands of compounds and antioxidants. And just like with other organic things, its benefits come from a result of a combination of its different ingredients. So for the sake of clarity, I'm going to focus on some of AMLA's main proven benefits. One of AMLA's proven benefits is its effects on female and male pattern hair loss. The topic of male and female pattern hair loss is kind of complicated, so I made a separate video on the topic. The video will bring you up to speed so you can have a better understanding of what I'm about to talk about. So pause the video and watch this quick 4 minute video on male and female pattern hair loss. The link is below in the description section. So now I hope you understand all the current research theories out there on what causes male and female pattern hair loss. A study done on mice in 2009 revealed that AMLA used topically helps block the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which you know from this video, less 5-alpha reductase means less DHT, which means a substantial slowdown of male and female pattern hair loss. The study also showed that 1% of AMLA in a solution increased hair follicle count 97.7% and that 1% of AMLA works better than 2% of Rogaine, which only increased hair follicle counts just 50%. AMLA also does a good job at reversing grays and making the color of your hair darker. Again, the research on why hair turns gray is kinda complex, so I made a separate video that goes over all the research behind it. It's a quick five minute video, so pause this video and watch it to get a clear understanding of why hair turns gray. So now that you know some theories on why hair turns gray, here's what AMLA does. A study done on rats showed that AMLA raised levels of catalase and other antioxidant enzymes, which as you know from this video, Increased levels of catalase in your hair follicles means reduced levels of hydrogen peroxide, which means a buildup of melanin and a restoration of your naturally dark hair color. AMLA also contains a large amount of ascorbic acid, or vitamin C, about 600 milligrams to 1800 milligrams in every 100 grams of AMLA to be exact which makes a great antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory agent. It's also really good at speeding up the healing process of wounds and cuts on your scalp, 
by stimulating collagen growth tissues. For hair strands, it can help flatten and improve the overall quality of your cuticle layers. But just as a precaution, too much vitamin C can be really drying and make your hair feel brittle and crunchy. So it's best not to use a concentrated amount of amla on your hair too often. There's a few ways to prepare amla to use on your hair. Some people prefer to make amla oil and some people prefer to make amla paste. So I'm going to show you how to make both and give you some helpful tips. I'm also going to compare the pros and cons of the paste versus the oil and do an on-camera experiment to compare how both work. Let's start with making amla oil with the simmer method. What you'll need is a stainless steel double boiler, amla powder, and an oil of your choice. I'm using an herbal hot oil treatment because of its added medicinal and lubricating benefits. Mix one cup of amla powder to two cups of oil in the top pan. As this sits, add water to the bottom pan and bring it to a boil. Once the water starts boiling, turn the heat down to a low simmer and place the pan with the amla oil mix on top. I prefer this method because the indirect heat safely stimulates the amla to release more of its magic and infuse better with the oil without damaging it or burning it. Let it sit in a low simmer for an hour to an hour and a half. You're going to have to stir it around from time to time, so put a timer on a 15 minute interval so you don't forget to check on it. After an hour or so, turn off the heat and let it cool. After it's cooled, strain the oil into a glass jar. You're left with a really potent medicinal oil that you can use directly on your scalp, hair, and skin, or mix into any of your DIY recipes. Now here's how to make the amla paste using the mix method. What you'll need is a mixing bowl, mixing tool, amla powder, warm water, and an oil of your choice. Again, I'm using the herbal hot oil treatment for its added complexity and lubrication benefits. Mix one cup of amla powder with one and a half to two cups of warm water. It's really about preference. I used about one and a half cups of water to get this consistency. Then add a third cup of an oil of your choice. It's best to use warm water and not cold water for two reasons. First, warm water will help stimulate the amla powder to release its magic into the solution. And warm water breaks the powder down better to give it a smoother consistency, which is important because a smoother consistency ensures that the paste clings onto your hair and absorbs better. So make sure to mix it up real good. I also like to let it sit for an hour or two, maybe even overnight, to give the micronutrients time to get to know each other. Now let's do a little experiment to take a closer look at the differences. I'm going to use amla oil on one side of my head and amla paste on the other side as my conditioner step. Of course, start with freshly washed hair. Make sure to use a paper towel to soak up the excess water so it doesn't repel the oil. Among other many, many benefits amla offers to your scalp, it also does a really good job at tightening the pores your hair strands grow out of. Which is a good thing because tighter pores means less things can get caught in between and obstruct hair growth. So make sure to focus the amla oil and amla paste on your scalp and dedicate a minute or two to massage it in. After that, coat your hair strands with it. For both methods, you can wear a shower cap and sit under a hooded dryer for 30 minutes or wear a shower cap and a thermal cap for about an hour. After rinsing them out, the first thing I notice is how reinforced my hair feels. Amla does a really good job at binding to each hair strand really well and making them feel protected. In fact, even after rinsing it out, my hair felt so coated that I definitely did not have to add any more products to it. All I had to do was retwist and that's it. If you haven't tried Amla yet, 
I want to give you as much information as possible to decide which method to try first. So here's an overview of the pros and cons of amla oil and amla paste. Vitamin C is not soluble in oil, so its content in amla oil is lower than in amla paste. But due to the simmer infusing process, overall the oil is still really potent. Comparing the two, the paste was definitely a lot more challenging and messier to use. It also took extra effort to rinse it out of my thick, dense hair. What I like most about the oil is that it makes your hair feel protected and can be stored in a cool, dry place for up to a year. It can also be used as a leave-in and in other DIY recipes. One last thing. Here are some helpful tips I put together, just in case you were wondering. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.